so you go through, oh, this is my last thing with college. I was so in awe and envious of you guys when you guys had that five slammer jammer. That that was something. And I'm glad you brought up uh, Mishaw because he was one of my favorite of that team. <laughs> Uh, that, that guy could play, man. People underestimated him. But the way that you guys were dunking and so athletic and creative, I was like, you know what? I surely wish I could have went to a school like that. What was it like in the locker room? It was better than it was more fun than it looked. And you're absolutely right. Larry Mishaw was a beast. 6'9", 250, was a prototypical power forward. He was every bit as good as Carl Malone and could have had a, the same kind of NBA career. But back then, if you can remember, the minimum salary in the NBA in 83 uh, was 75000 And so he could go to Europe and make 600000 So yeah. he played in Italy for about 15, 20 years. He was MVP for about 17 of them. And he, he could really play, dude. So that, you're absolutely right about that. But, but it was great because it was a good environment. It was an academic environment. We had to be accountable in the classroom. Uh, uh, but but, I, but but you know it was one of those deals where it's a fun team. But we came out of nowhere. Like yeah. no one knew who I was. Matter of fact, Coach Lewis, when he finally got me there, got hate mail for recruiting. Who is this guy Drexler? You know, we don't know who he is. He's a bum. Comes to find out a month later, I'm the first freshman to ever start for him in what 30 years, right? So it, you know, just people just don't know what they know, Coop. So it, it taught me a lot about just taking care of your business. But you asked me the question, what was it like to see Hakeem? Michael Young and I got there, and they had Rob Lewis and Larry Mitchell. But Hakeem came September the 30th. We enrolled September 1st. He came September 30th. A friend of Guy Lewis sent him to uh, St. John's and University of Houston to see if they want to keep him for their basketball team. Well, he got to New York. I think it was snowing outside, and uh, Hakeem didn't like that. So he said, he asked one of the flight attendants, what's the weather like in Houston? She said, it's tropical and warm. He said, I want to go there now. So he had his ticket changed right, <laughs> right to Houston. Wow. Wasn't, nobody there to, wasn't nobody there to pick him up now. You got to understand. And so when he came to Houston, he, he caught a cab to the athletic uh, department, and we were there to greet him. That, so I was one of the first greeters, wow. and we've been, we've been great friends ever since. He ended up redshirting that year. He came off the bench the following year. And then about that third or fourth year, he became the dream. Hmm. <laughs> So that's like don't 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 bet on you guys, right? Don't 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 bet against us. That's one of the don't things. Bet. Well, we came from nowhere. Think about it. If if Hakeem had gone to St. John's, Lou Conaseca was the coach. He was more guard oriented. I don't know if he would have stuck because he didn't know a lot of basketball. Did not. And know Ewing him. was at Georgetown. Yeah, yeah, but this was even before then. Yeah. But but Hakeem Guy Lewis was a consummate big man coach. In his day, he was six three, and he wow. considered himself the best post guy in the world. And he could teach anybody, no matter what size, how to play the post. So Hakeem came to the right guy, trust me. And you're hey, saying Clyde. he developed him like that over the over those two years to that to the point where he became the dream? Yeah, well, yeah, Doc, he had Guy Lewis working with him. He had teammates like me, Michael Young, Larry Mitchell, right. guys who loved him and worked with him every day, and a couple of other guys. And then he had a guy named Moses Malone, who's three-time <laughs> MVP of the league Ooh. as his mentor. Come on now. <laughs> but I can't work this butt off to become the dream. Trust me.